Diedrich Bader. When the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold began, the role of Batman was given to Diedrich Bader, even though before that he had more experience playing Robin. True. Please don't send us to prison. And the choice of Diedrich Bader turned out to be inspired. He had voiceover experience, he has comedic chops, and that gravelly voice would be great for the bat. Especially a slightly less serious bat. What is this now? The fifth or sixth death trap I've been tied up to because of you over the years? Yeah, I said I was sorry. Brave and the Bold was an animated throwback to the Silver Age, casting a light on some forgotten villains, and letting Batman team up with all manner of other heroes, from the goofy to the serious. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> The show wholeheartedly embraces the ridiculousness of comic books. All these creatures might be too over the top to be Batman villains. I really don't see how. And it was filled with some hilarious side characters, notably a fantastic take on Aquaman. Batman, old chum. Aquaman, what is it? I need to be rescued from this blasted vacation. Aquaman was voiced by John DiMaggio, using a very similar voice to the one he used as another superhero parody character. No malice can evade their sight. No crime escapes their ears. They hear, they see, they report to me. Captain Laserbeam's Adventure Gatiers! Captain, Captain Laserbeam. Laserbeam! A superhero parody character who, funny enough, often teams up with a mashup of Batman and Aquaman. I am the hero the ocean deserves. I am your semi-amphibious knight. I am Philip Fathom, the DC Detective. Detective. The show's not pure comedy 100% of the time, but even the show's most serious episode can't resist just a bit of meta humor in the guest cast. Oh, Martha, let him play. Thomas Wayne, when he has nightmares tonight, you can be the one to calm him down. And so an ordinary mortal conquered tragedy and became the greatest champion for the cause of justice. Justice. What is justice without vengeance, Phantom Stranger? And the show has no shortage of purely comedic episodes too, such as the one where they recreate a Mad Magazine Batman parody, visit a manga universe, and do a new episode of new Scooby-Doo movies with Batman and Weird Al. Bader doesn't play any of the Batman variants in that episode, but I still have to shout it out. My good friend millionaire Bruce Wayne is a big polka fan. I'm reasonably sure he'd match your contribution, Al. <laughs> That's wonderful, Batman. Done. And it's kind of funny in retrospect that this show beat the movies to doing Batman versus Superman. I'm not your enemy, Superman. All who oppose me are my enemies. Look at yourself. What would Ma Kent think? Ma? How dare you? Okay, now here comes the twist. I enjoy the show a lot, and felt it was worth mentioning on this list, but I don't really see Batman himself as a comedic character in it. He provides some humor due to his dry wit and his occasional difficulty playing well with others, but he's honestly more of a grounding presence in the show, more of like the only serious character in this mixed up universe. Great. I get to deal with this now. When this show is funny, most of the comedy comes from the situations and the other over-the-top characters. Batman himself isn't really laugh a minute here. So while Brave and the Bold might be one of my favorite frequently funny Batman shows, this portrayal of Batman himself is not actually one of my favorite comedic versions of the character. But the other cartoon Batman voiced by Diedrich Bader... Joke's on you, Joker. Jesus, this guy. The Harley Quinn animated series might be the most cynical take on Gotham City yet, and it might also be one of the funniest. It's got it all. A borderline corrupt, washed up Jim Gordon played by Christopher Maloney, a brilliant ensemble of comic book villains played by some of the funniest people alive from Ron Funches to Andy Daly, and of course, the return of Diedrich Bader as Batman. Oh, ain't he cute when he's escaping? No. <laughs> Seeing as this show is from the perspective of villains, and most of the conflict is between them and other villains, 
Batman is only a supporting character on this show, only appearing in 11 out of the 26 episodes so far. Why would I watch a show that's set in Gotham City, but Batman's barely in it? You watched all five seasons of Gotham. And it honestly would have been easy for the show to decide that Batman would just barely be a presence at all. Just be an imposing figure who shows up from time to time to strike fear into the hearts of our cowardly superstitious protagonists. But the show still allows Batman to be his own character, who's just as funny as the rest of the cast. Damien, I made your favorite. You didn't make that. Alfred made that. I made him make it. This show reveals Batman's stoic demeanor as an image he is actively trying to cultivate. But sometimes the cracks start to slip, especially as he gets more and more annoyed by his foes. And as sure as I am that he f***s bats, okay. I know my man will break me out of Arkham. Or worst of all, more and more annoyed by his friends. One nest of parademons coming right up! Okay, that wasn't anybody. Jim, what's wrong? Ah, it's Barb. You know, she's sleeping with someone else, and the worst part, I can't blame her. I mean, a woman can only go so long watching the dead eyes of her lover thrust the top her before she looks for something new. The signal is for emergencies. Well... Emergencies. You've abused it. He's still intimidating when on the job, but this is another take that plays with how emotionally stunted Batman really is. Not good at emotion. Or... Vocabulary. Especially when all his power is stripped from him. I've made you a cup of honey tea and pigs in blankets. I don't want pigs in a blanket. I want to fight crime. I will take that honey tea. This sorority girl can't run around wearing the bat symbol. It's gonna make people think I'm back. So your quibble is with the unsanctioned use of your logo, sir. Hey, it's not a logo, it's a symbol. He's still got that great Diedrich Bader deadpan, but now it's channeled more into Batman's frustrations with everyone around him, and my God, it's hilarious. And of course, this show really highlights Batman's complete refusal to show any vulnerability no matter how easily vulnerability may slip through the cracks sometimes. I don't know what he wants from me. We're co-workers. My screensaver just kicked in, didn't it? And the other characters frequently get the joke on Batman, too. This is definitely one of those Bruce Waynes who doesn't slide for being a good billionaire. Now I know Batman is just some boring rich asshole with parental issues. That's really reductive. You know how funny this Batman is? He is so funny that a joke the show isn't even going to be allowed to use still made Twitter actually funny for a day. Batman is still not the funniest part of this show, but he is one of the very many hilarious elements that make this show delightful. Gory and vulgar as all get out, but delightful. When can I start having sex? I think I hear the bat signal. 